Hi, hello, this is Edit and Kenny. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to just take the time and talk about the writer and actor strike that's going on right now to protect and support those who are the reason that we have the shows and the movies that we talk about on the channel. And those people are often disproportionately underpaid for their work. So I wanted to take this time to vocalize my support and kind of talk about how uh, my channel kind of falls into that. If you were curious, as of uh, recording this, as I understand it, reviews actually help the uh, strike. It encourages support. These works are impossible without uh, the writers and actors who participate, um, even the garbage ones that we talk about here on this channel. But hey, so I will continue to do reviews as usual, but I won't be taking any like sponsorships, for instance, or money for promotion from said companies. I've never done that for bad movies in a beat anyway. So yeah, wanted to let you know about it. If you didn't know, I'm always very pro f you pay me what I'm worth. <laughs> Like I said, as of right now, my reviews aren't going to be changing. But if, you know, I get some different information or things change along the way, then there will be changes on my channel to reflect that accordingly with uh, support for the strike. So yeah, uh, I will link down below uh, some ways you can monetarily support the strike. Yeah, let's get on to the video today. I have had nothing in my head. It's just been like loose change in here, except for the Sleep Token album that my friend just showed me <laughs> cannot think of anything other than <laughs> this eclectic mixture of metal alternative almost bluesy elements <laughs> as well as just sad horny music It opened something feral in me. It's so good. I need to see them in concert. Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. Not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. I'm out of breath. <laughs> if you don't know what Saturday is, it's generally when I do something on my channel called Bad Movies and a Beat, series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. <sighs> this week was another one that slipped in at the tail end of the week. There's a movie called Deadly Dilf, so. But uh, before we get started on that, let's send it over to Admiral Kinney. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Admiral Kinney and today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are over 70,000 events happening every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sporting events, festivals, and more. It puts all the tickets across the web in one place so you can choose the one that is the best price for you. Each ticket is rated on a scale of one to 10. And if you see green dots, those are the best prices for you. And red means you're not getting the best deal possible. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that allows you to return your tickets ahead of the event using Swap. Personally, I just used SeatGeek twice this week. I got tickets to see Victoria Monet and Sleep Token. Diversity. Hang out with the R&B girlies and then the metalheads later in the same month. And of course, if you would like to check out SeatGeek, I have a code for you guys to get $20 off if you use code Kenny. That's $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek if you use code Kenny. And be sure to click on the link below to download the SeatGeek app. Big thanks again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery, baby. All right, so last time we were here, we talked about Misery, the Stephen King movie with Kathy Bates and the other guy. <laughs> I hate to say that, but I only care about Kathy Bates because I just couldn't watch crap last week. I was going to lose my mind. So if you were curious about movies that I find good, I did a good movies and a glam last week. So you can check that out up above or you can check it out in the bad movies and a beat playlist or the good movies and a glam playlist as well. And like I said, this week, we're talking about some shit that y'all found on Tubi again. <laughs> and like I said, it kind of hit me at the tail end of the week. I was not planning on making a video on this. I was gonna make a video um, on the movie that Nacho from 365 Days 2 and 3. He had another movie that was also Polish where he's also Italian. He might actually just be Italian, but in Poland. So they have him playing every Italian man that's ever existed in Poland where he falls in love with an older woman and it gets very messy. It's called Heaven and Hell. Probably will be next week because that was an experience as well. But I was attacked <laughs> with the alliteration of a lifetime, Deadly Dilf. 
2023. It's that subgenre of fatal attraction type films. The ones that are like, I had an affair with this crazy woman and now she's ruining my life. But within that genre, there's the one where it's like the older man and the younger, very young, usually girl, like college freshman, barely legal high school senior, where the man in his 30s or something is just completely overwhelmed by the treachery and trickery and the fanaticism of this this young girl and so she stalks and predates him until there's some like giant flourish at the end yep sounds like something men would write but again y'all gave me one of those with the title of deadly dilf so <laughs> how am i gonna pass that up like i I'm only human, <laughs> like whatever. And this movie, I think more so than others in this uh, genre, tried in some ways to have some depth to uh, characters, even though it's still some shit on Tubi in all the ways that you would expect it to be some shit on Tubi. It certainly didn't go where I was expecting it to go. <laughs> I'll say that. And I laughed way harder than what was appropriate for <laughs> the given subject matter. I, I genuinely believe it was supposed to be like emotional by the end. And I shed tears, just not the ones of sadness, just of dubious confusion and bewilderment and hilarity. It was very funny on accident, I think. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what they were going for, but I watched it. So y'all gonna watch it too. It's stupid. It's poorly acted. It's weirdly shot. There's some like, angle, camera angle choices that feel almost uh, too dignified for this movie. It also feels very long for only being an hour and 37 minutes. But uh, yeah, this is Deadly Dilf <laughs> 2023. So the movie begins with our main female lead. And I'm gonna warn y'all right now, I will not be pronouncing her name right. I'm probably gonna pronounce it eight different ways in this video, despite them saying her name literally all the time in the movie. But her name is Elysium. 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 Elysium, which she says is Latin for heaven. I. I'd assume she'd know. But she's racing down the street with her GBF and they are both on their college track team. We'll learn later that she is actually a scholarship student at a local college via track. So it's very, very important to her as it is essentially the only reason she can go to her college. And they do practice runs together pretty often in their neighborhood. So this was just another day like that before she headed home. But on her way back home, she's chased by a mysterious man in a gray hoodie. And when she gets to her front door, she finds that it's locked and her dad accidentally did that. So he comes to the door to find her when she's getting kidnapped by the mysterious man that was following her. There is a tussle outside. Oh no, another song just came into my mental playlist. If you ever wonder what it's like in my head, it's like 4 million different things happening at the same time, but a revolving jukebox also playing as well. And I try to speak at the same time. It's just a lot of noise. <laughs> Oh, but uh, the dag is shot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh God. <laughs> he gets shot in the struggle and ends up dying. He ends up passing away. It would seem that the traumatic death of her father is what predates the events of the story. So again, I'm surprised that we're having any form of actual storyline or, or pivotal character event happen to whoever I'm supposed to assume is supposed to be our antagonist of the film. So after the death of her father, it's sl Ooh. Elysium. Elysium. Elysium moves in with her aunt. And before you know it, Six months have passed and she, you know, is still very much so in the process of grieving her father. But she's gone back to school. She's back to running. You know, it seems to be a bit of her respite at this point. And while she's there, a new family moves in next door. The husband's name is Rio. The wife's name is Tori. Rio has a son from a previous marriage named Gunner who stays there when he's not with his mother. And they're being helped by Rio's older brother, Jake, I think is his name. It doesn't really matter all that much, honestly. And they moved into this very expensive, ridiculous looking house. I'm like, what do y'all do? 
And apparently uh, the wife is a business owner of sorts, obviously the breadwinner of the family, which ends up being a bit of a conflict later, as you will see. And Rio and his son Gunner play a bit of catch the football or whatever uh, in the backyard of their new home. And while they're playing, the son accidentally throws the ball over the fence and into Elysium's Elysium's aunt's house. So she takes the ball and goes over to their house and she meets the brother first. And he's like, oh, that's my nephew's ball. And she's like, okay, well, I'll go give it to the family. We note that he notices that she's attractive. Really, I'm aiming for rhythm that exceeds my expectations. Am I ever gonna get it? I, 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 Still waiting for you. This looks a mess, just put a lash on it and act like it didn't happen. It's the story of my life thus far. She goes over to the house, ends up meeting the family when she returns the ball. They spark up conversation. She tells them that she's at school on a track scholarship. Apparently that's something that Rio has in common with her. He used to run track in college and he used to go to the same college. Tori's like, oh, that's so cool. We, um run a local gym in the area that just opened up. Be sure to come by sometime since you're an athlete and whatnot. Now I got Bobby Valentine in here. You should be with me. Baby girl is killing me. Why you gonna act like you don't? Bobby Bobby Valentino was his name. Slow down. I just want to get to know you. I want to know. I gotta know, know your name, your name, your name. Why you gotta be anonymous? What if her name was actually anonymous? I am so sorry. <laughs> I swear I took my ADHD meds today, but I don't know what is going on. Okay. They're like, oh, we just opened a gym. Feel free to come by since you're an athlete. And she's like, sure. But they have to have one of those inexplicable attraction moments between her and Rio as she goes to reach for her water bottle. Now they do this particular uh, camera choice several times throughout the movie and it's so disconcerting every time because it's like stylistically not at all similar to the rest of the movie so it's always like this jump there's also times i'm getting a bit ahead of myself where they do these like they do these like horror movie down shots almost almost kubrickian shots that are just funny in this context they don't fit but yeah there's obviously or at least the movie wants to tell us there is this inexplicable attraction not that inexplicable he is fine uh he just too old for her the brother fine too like they all fine as hell but but of course elysium notices that the married one is fine she watches him when he's in his backyard fixing the pool shower and he has to get naked to do so i guess i don't the slow motion rainfall in early 2000s late 90s r&b shot yeah, we know what you're doing movie now cater to you why is cater to you in my head now Good, the bad, the ups and the down. That's the least I can do. Let me cater to you. <laughs> Elysium ends up becoming closer to the wife, Tori, um, and offers to do their social media. Considering, you know, she's younger, she understands that a bit better than them. And in return, Tori's like, yeah, come by the gym anytime and you can get in for free. Like, no, you've helped so much. So we're gonna be seeing a lot more of her at the gym, it would seem. But we start to get signs that, you know, Lysium is a bit of a snooper. She's already shown her interest in Rio. So she like goes through her phone a little bit. They don't really show what she was looking for or what she did or anything. They just, they just put that scene in there to show that she's willing to do that, I guess. I don't know. But we learn more about Elysium's trauma in the sense that she still has nightmares of the night her father died, something that her aunt is aware of. And she sees to her in the night when she has said nightmares, which makes sense of why she becomes a bit more obsessed with this other man this desperate grasp for uh, a father figure perhaps i don't know and again it's another one of those scenes where they change the style of the movie super abruptly and it's very jarring <laughs> it's very off-putting i do not like it i'm not a fan but before we can make sense of that our next scene is her running into rio at school 
Apparently, he's going back to school, and it's the exact same school that she goes to. He's also an undergrad. He's going back to finish his studies because he never got to finish, which for some reason he didn't mention to her when they were talking about her schooling at the house. He could have said, oh yeah, I'm actually going there too, but he didn't. So we just abruptly see him at her school. I was like, is he stalking her? But no. And he's like, yep, I'm officially the school's oldest sophomore at the age of 35. This is blue. Hold up. I thought this was, I thought this was black. Muy interesante. It's called Panther. Close now, my eyes, my soul, my sunlit skies, I need you in my arms now. Okay, with this hair though, and my piercings? Big titty goth girlfriend, hello. <laughs> Yeah, he's there at the school. He also takes some of the same classes because apparently they share a major again. Why are we just finding this out? But okay. The brothers like to box as a way to spend time together. Also, you know, get some frustrations out. They work out that way. And this is another conversation where we find out that people around Rio kind of mock him for being a bit of a sugar baby uh, because his wife is the breadwinner. This just further leads me to expect that that's gonna be like a conflict in the future, which Again, it does. But this is also where we find out a bit more about why Rio is in school now. Apparently when his ex-wife got pregnant with their son, he had to leave school. And so now, you know, he's getting a second chance. So that's commendable in and of itself. So being that he's spending so much time at the school um, and they have a major in common. Again, it was weird that you didn't tell her this when y'all met, uh, but they become friends of sorts, Rio and Elysium. 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 <laughs> Again, there's more of those random slowdown scenes to show that they're attracted to each other, particularly him attracted to her. And he's just too playful for a mother that's married. And honestly, even right here, things could have gotten a bit, but her friend ended up catching him before it could go any further. But being that Tori, the wife does like Elysium, <laughs> she allows her to babysit their son when they go out one day. And while she's babysitting, the son shows Elysium the lockbox that they use to hide their gun. <laughs> Kids do be just going into shit for no reason. And she's like, oh my God, why did you, oh my God, you shouldn't be able to unlock this. Oh God, put that away. Later, the son's mother comes and picks up the child and it seems that she also likes Elysium, Elysium when they first meet. Um, so everyone seems to get like a good first impression from her overall. Again, back at the gym, we see more of this dynamic between Rio and his wife where she kind of treats him more like an employee than a spouse and sometimes even treats him a bit like a child in the sense that she just randomly gives him a debit card uh, for his quote unquote spending money. A girl. <laughs> because she doesn't want him to use the card that's connected to their savings account until the business is off the ground. Pardon? Baby, he's a grown man. That's not, not allowance, hun. That's at least something y'all should have a conversation about. Like what? Um, apparently they have like a saying where he says, you earn and I learn. That's demeaning whatever sex says that. That's wild. Okay. There's Elysium. Elysium to see it whenever it happens, them arguing amongst each other. So she's staking out that maybe he's not entirely happy in his relationship. One day she goes for a run, Elysium, and she's seemingly being run after by another man in a hoodie. And she runs to Rio's house and he answers and she's like, somebody's following me. And apparently it's quote, just the guy that she used to date and doesn't want to date anymore. He's briefly mentioned in the beginning of the movie, but I felt there's no real point of mentioning him because these are the only two scenes that he's in and he's in no way important to the story. I don't know why the man you used to date chasing you in the dark makes that any better. <laughs> and she's like, can I stay here with you because my aunt isn't in the house and I'm kind of scared to be alone. Rio lets her into the house to calm her nerves. They talk, she tells him the story of how her father died, that he died only a few months prior to them moving into the house. He gives her a shot. 
He puts his hand on her knee. She asks, is it okay for her to be there while his wife is away? She went on like a business trip or something. And because he's already feeling demeaned by her, he's like, I don't need to tell her everything. I don't need to ask her permission. He's like, you can stay here. You can sleep in my bed and I'll sleep on the couch. And then he shows her to the room and she's like, you can stay though. And they go back and forth a little bit. And he's like, I don't think I trust myself around you. They sleep together because you knew that was going to happen. And the next morning, it's pretty obvious that Rio uh, regrets it. We shouldn't have did that. You know, I was I was drunk and you were drunk and we shouldn't have done it. She's like, am I supposed to just pretend that nothing happened? But eventually he just like shoes her away and he's like, oh, I gotta get work done, leave me alone. They then play quite possibly one of the worst songs I've ever heard ever. I am strong, I am beautiful, and I am tough. I will fight and I will win and do it all over again. I will get through it all when life get rough. Genuinely terrible. I am she, I am her, I am the one. Come here, let me show you how to do this, hun. The lyrics suck, it's offbeat. The rapping is terrible. Oh my God, I'm speechless. It's, <laughs> I just had to bring that up. The other music in the movie is fine. This one particularly was shocking. How did this get in here? Who do y'all owe? But the next day I practice, she tells GBF that she slept with Rio and he's like, oh, that's a bad idea. Why did you do that? And she's like, now he has the nerve to act like nothing happened. He's like, yeah, he's married. <laughs> like, but we have so much in common and I've seen him fight with his wife. You know, I don't think he wants to be with her. And he's like, look, I understand you've had a rough few months, but he's not your knight in shining armor, insinuating like he's not a replacement for your dad or whatever. And she's just not listening because she's laser focused. And so she keeps popping up like a omen. She's, you know, over the house, Tori invites her to dinner and he's like, nah, she gotta go. And she's like, well, she helps us with the social media of the gym. Like she's invaluable. Come on, we can give her some pasta. And he's like, nah, 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 she gotta go. So she's like, just to scare him, I'm gonna go up to his wife and be like, I forgot to tell you something about me and Rhea. We both got A's on our practice tests. Impressive, right? Reason number 883, why you shouldn't cheat. But later Tori's like, I think she has a little crush on you, but how can you blame her? So she does notice that there's some interest from Elysian. I'm gonna just say that's it. But she thinks of it more of like a young girl's crush because I think most people would. <laughs> But Elysium starts popping up at classes that they don't share together. She starts working at the gym. He seemingly can't escape her at school or at work and not at home either because she's the next door neighbor. He ends up telling his brother that he did indeed cheat on his uh, current wife. And the brother is pissed. He's like, seriously, you cheated on your last ex? Damn, Tori too? And he's like, it wasn't an affair. It was just one time and blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh my God. God, like this is so ghetto. Rio tries to pay her off, trying to give her six months worth of pay if she worked at the gym, which she declined. Around this time, Elysium's aunt starts to suspect that she has some form of obsession with Rio, but she doesn't say much at this point. She continues to obsess over him, watches as he studies with a classmate, imagines them flirting well into the night. And eventually she goes up to him and she's like, oh, I have a study guide for the class that we're in. And he's like, no, I switched out of that class. I'm not in it, you can keep it. And so this seems to be her like final straw. The only thing left to do vandalized. She takes her running shoes, she scratches up his car, bangs up all the windows out your car. Sorry, again, the jukebox. And Rio knows that, of course, she's the one that did it. So he goes to the aunt's house and he's like, I need to talk to her because she destroyed my car. And the aunt is able to pick together at this point, this is a bit of like, hmm. Oh, well, maybe we should have this conversation with your wife. And that seems to be something he's not interested in. So I guess, you know, intuition, she knows. She's like, what happened? How often did you actually do something to his car? Um, And she tells her all of that. Maybe you should talk to somebody. Cause again, your dad died. You've been going through a lot and you seem to be having a lot of outbursts. She's like, I don't need no help. So it's gonna get worse. So the wife is like, yo, we need to call the police and find out who, do the, who did that to our car because what? And he seems to be weirdly averse to that. <laughs> he was like, we don't need to find out who did it. But like, eventually they end up having a double date with the brother and his date. And apparently the wife set him up with a lesion. If you recall, she was just acting like how she's such a baby, but she set her up with Rio's 
older brother and Rio is 35. So he's at least 35 and you set him up with like a 18 year old, but we just need the scene to happen. So whatever. Um. So yeah, the tension gets high. The brother has no idea that this is the woman that he cheated with. So he's just blissfully ignorant. He's like, oh, she's very pretty. Like she's cool. After the dinner, Lijim comes to the brother's house and she tries to get something going with him. And he's like, oh, let's slow down or whatever. Perhaps because he starts to notice that she has a bit of an obsession with Rio and his wife about whether or not they're happy. She accidentally calls him Rio's name while they're making Making out. This was enough for him to realize, oh my God, you're the woman that he cheated with, aren't you? And she's like, what? And he's like, oh my God, get the f out of my house. That combined with her having a crazed look in her eye is enough for him to be like, I need you to get the hell out of my house. One day the ex comes to the house and she's like, I'm here to pick up the baby. And he's like, he's not at the house. She was like, I thought you picked him up. So not a baby missing. He, uh, whatever her name is, picked up the baby from school, done kidnapped the baby. And everybody's like, oh my God, where the baby? And she comes back with the baby saying, oh, we went to the beach. She lies that Rio asked her to do this, to pick the baby up. And so he's like, okay, we gotta use drastic measures. She's stealing my baby. Rio goes to his brother to get drugs from some people he used to know what, what? Uh, weirdo um yeah put this in her water bottle and when she gets her physical for track she'll get kicked out because they'll say she doing drugs and he's like well she still live next door even if she don't go to the school and he's like well we'll handle that one thing at a time i guess okay so they do that presumably off screen and she goes to her coach and they like you do drugs and she like what no i don't do drugs they go back and forth she's like you're off the team you're out of school peace she goes up to rio and she's like i know you did it around this time is when i start to notice that no one starts crying in this movie they just are when you see them but um she's like i know you did this but another thing the physical showed is that your son is gonna have a baby brother i'm pregnant bitch rio goes and tells his brother and he's like that bitch definitely lying i know somebody at the school's women's health thing and I used to date her for a bit and I bet I could get her lab report girl <laughs> so he goes to the college gets her lab shows that she's not pregnant and he goes to the house Elysium Elysium is already there she was there rigging the shed so that next time Rio goes up to the shed the tools will fall on him but when the brother comes and confronts her he accidentally pulls the shed and he dies <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is the second time in this movie I've laughed very hard at a sudden death that made no sense to me. He doesn't die immediately, but he's out there dying and he eventually dies. I just didn't expect that Shyamalan twist. I, re I just didn't. Nuts. Coco bananas. But she screamed, don't nobody call the police, nothing. In this nice ass neighborhood that just had someone get stabbed outside of it or shot outside of it, nobody called the police, whatever. He's left there long into the night when they've returned home. But eventually Tori finds the body. Well, he's still alive barely and they take him to the hospital. Later, she discovers panties that uh, old girl had staged in their house at one point. And now they finally have, you know, the, the, you, she came in my house, she touched my child. <laughs> conversation that every of every one of these like fatal attraction type movies have to have i can't believe you cheated on me even though technically you cheated on your last wife with me and everybody was telling me like if he did that to her he'll do it to you but i believed you which is new information we didn't know that until right now but um he admits that it's with Elysium, Elysium <laughs> that he cheated. After everything I do for you, I pay for your schooling. I take care of your child that is not my kid. I take care of the kid for you because I love you and I love that child. That child does not deserve to find out that his dad is a bitch. He deserves better than you. I deserve better than you. And then she storms off. And so later, Elysium gets back into the house. Do y'all have no security at all in this big ass, nice ass house? Not nothing? But she breaks into the house again, finds that gun. <laughs> she go into the room, she kisses the baby. She then goes into the room with Rio and it was a dream. Or was it? But they all survived the night at least. Um, and the next morning, it's just the boys at the house until Child Protective Services comes to the house and actually does their job. This is actually very funny to me because <laughs> not in like a 
ha ha way, but in a very dark and unfortunate way. I've known many people that work with children who have had to contact child services because they were concerned about the safety of a child and not once have they actually done shit. <laughs> and it's not funny. I've never heard of them actually doing anything. So the fact that they're so enthusiastic to get this child out of this house was very funny to me. Elysium told CPS that they let the little boy have a gun. They find the gun, they call the mother. He blames Elysium. They don't listen to him because no one believes that. He's not to have contact with his son until the process of whatever is going on is done. Again, I ain't never seen him do a job that quickly. And then after this, he gets the call that the brother is now dead. And he's like, that's my final straw. I can't see my kid. My wife done left me and my brother dead. I'm gonna have to shoot this fish. I was getting a little confused. I was like, it's called deadly dilf. When, when is he gonna be deadly? He hasn't done, well, here you go. So he gets that gun, which apparently they didn't take for evidence or maybe he has another one. I don't know. He goes, to Elysium, who seems to have broken into his house again, threatens to shoot her just as the wife comes back for some reason. Baby, put the gun down! Put the gun down! Don't do this! Don't do this! Oh my God! Tell her the truth! And Elysium was like, yeah, he telling the truth. I, I did all that shit. And she's like, baby, you better than this! And in the confusion, she tells um Elysium to run. So she go running. Rio runs after her. She goes running after Rio. And they run it and they cross the street. This is not funny. <laughs> Tori get hit by uh, a car that is being driven by Elysium's aunt. <laughs> Every single death in this movie has been unnecessarily hilarious. I'm so sorry. So she did. She's gone. And he crying in the street like, ah, my baby. And then we just do a dramatic flash forward. He's in jail. <laughs> for some reason i don't know what charges they got him on what what child endangerment or drugging her did they prove that somehow or attempted murder attempted assault on elysium i don't know what they got him for but he's in jail uh he gets a letter from elysium that says dear rio but they never read it aloud dear rio which was very funny to me because usually when someone gets a letter, you have their voice reading the letter. She just read, Dear Rio. And that's it. <laughs> so we never know what she said to him. And uh, then the movie ends with her going to her dad's grave, eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with no crust like he used to make for her. And she says, uh, I've done bad things. I miss you and I'm sorry. And that's the end of the movie. So yeah, that's... That's it. Uh, I'm sure I won't remember this movie next week, but y'all were wondering, so here it is. <laughs> Should I get my other tragus? I'm considering doing like a symmetrical thing with my ears. Let me know. Anyway, that's all for today. <laughs> this, this video has just been chaos. Me not being able to focus and hearing like 40 songs at the same time while trying to do work and drinking way too strong a matcha. If you ever wonder what it's like a day in the life, here you go. But uh, that's all for today, folks. If you liked today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny J Date. If you have other terrible movies you think I should check out, feel free to put those down in the comment section. At me on Twitter. Follow me on threads, apparently, now, too. And I will see you guys next time.